47 points. I'm going to say it again. 47 points. Who said the Knicks ain't got a superstar? Who said the Knicks ain't got a number one? 47 points. <laughs> Forty-seven points. Forty-seven points. I'm gonna say it again. Forty-seven points. Who said the Knicks ain't got a superstar? Who said the Knicks ain't got a number one? Forty-seven points. You know it's funny to me. It's funny to me that the NBA hates on Jalen Brunson because he's a Nick. I'm getting straight to it. Anybody who does not believe Jalen Brunson is the real MVP of the league is smoking crack. Jalen Brunson on a team without OG Ananobi and without Julius Randle, without Mitchell Robinson, carried this team to the number two seed in the NBA Eastern Conference. Nobody's catching Boston. Besides Boston, the best team in the East in a, in a conference with Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard, in a conference with Halle Burton and Pascal Siakam, in a conference with teams... Like the Miami Heat, teams like the 76ers, who are established and perennial playoff contenders. The Knicks, without their two best players, were still able to get the number two seed. And Jalen Brunson gets no love for that. Then we go to the playoffs. He's too small. He's not big enough. The Knicks don't have enough firepower to beat Joel Embiid. This is the 76ers series to lose. 47 in Philly. 47 in Philly. This boy Jalen Brunson is a problem. 47 in Philly. He's the real MVP. They gave Jokic an MVP because Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. were injured. The fact that Jalen Brunson isn't going to get any MVP votes when he's carried this team without OG Ananobi and without Julius Randle for the majority of the season, he should be getting MVP votes. And now we get all the way to the first round of the playoffs. Game four in Philadelphia, one of the hardest places to win. When Joel Embiid is healthy, those of y'all who watch basketball know this. When Joel Embiid is healthy, Philadelphia is one of the hardest places to win at. He went and gave him 47 in his building. And I don't want to hear Joel Embiid is injured. I don't want to hear the Philadelphia 76ers aren't healthy. That bozo dropped 50 points a couple days ago. You can't make any excuses for Joel Embiid when he just dropped 50 points two games ago. With his little cheating ass. We don't believe you. Here's another thing. Kelly Oubre, shut the fuck up. Okay, somebody go tell Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. Tell Kelly. They were talking about a tongue twister. Tell Kelly Oubre, shut the hell up. Nobody believes you. You're not tough. And tell Joel B, you're not Draymond. We don't believe you. When Draymond try to punk the other team, we believe Draymond. Draymond might, he might black your eye out. He might choke you. Draymond good for doing gangsta shit. We believe Draymond when he start doing crazy stuff. Joel, we don't believe you, nigga. You were just crying two years ago when, when Kawhi hit the shot. You was about to collapse going back to the DL locker room. <laughs> Kawhi hit the shot. <laughs> Shut up. You disgust me. You make me sick. I should spit on this nigga, son. Shut up. You seven foot three. Shut up. Oh, man. How you gonna let the Knicks take over? There was too many Knicks fish. Shut up. Shut up. How dare you lose a game and blame it on your fans? See, I told you 76 of fans he was going to demand a trade. I told you. This is the same Joel Embiid. That threw his whole team under the bus last year when they lost in the playoffs. Remember when they lost last year, he came to the podium and said, well, me and James Harden, we can't do it by ourselves. We need more help. 
This dude, Joel Embiid, is a clown, bro. Joel Embiid is the worst fourth quarter superstar I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen an MVP who is 7'3", play like he's 5'3", in a fourth quarter playoff games as much as I see Joel Embiid. I've never seen an MVP who's 7'3", consistently get hurt in the playoffs as much as I see Joel Embiid. I've never seen an MVP who's 7 foot 3 consistently deflect blame after every playoff loss. I've never seen an MVP who is 7 foot 3 who can't get out the second round of the playoffs. This is another year where Joel Embiid is going to fail to get out the second round. His new name Chris Paul got out the Cuz yeah, cuz Chris Paul had that year with the Rockets. So technically, Chris Paul played in the conference finals because he was on that Rockets team with James Harden. Damian Lillard, he actually got to a conference finals and got swept by the Warriors, even though KD was hurt. I think this nigga Joel Embiid is the seven foot three version of Tracy McGrady, son. He's seven foot three, Tracy McGrady. The only difference between Joel Embiid and Tracy McGrady is Joel Embiid got out the first round. He's the, he's the Tracy McGrady of big men. I've never seen a big man not get out the second round who won an MVP. I cannot think of a more dominant player who can't go to the conference finals. Because I'm like, who can't go to the conference finals? What is a player who can't break through? I'm like, damn. Chris Paul had that year with the Rockets. Dame had that year when he got swept by Golden State. I mean, even Luka Dockage went to the conference finals before he lost to, uh, I forgot who Luka lost to, but even Luka broke through and made it to a conference. Was it Golden State? Did Luka lose to Golden State in the conference finals? Whatever. The point is, these superstars, if you're that guy, you at bare minimum can make it to a conference finals. LeBron James and those sorry ass Lakers were just in the conference finals last year against Jokic. How you seven foot three and you can't get out the second round? Jimmy Butler with a bunch of practice squad players just ran all the way to an NBA Finals last year. What the hell does that say about Joel B that he's seven foot three? MVP can't get out the second round in the playoffs. And this is about to be the fifth time he loses in the first round. To a team whose best player is barely six foot tall. What the hell are we doing out here? Joel Embiid is the most overrated, overblown, overtalked about superstar in the history of sports. Joel Embiid, all things considered, might be the biggest failure in the history of sports. He's a joke. Y'all make fun of Matt Ryan for losing 28-3. He made it to a Super Bowl. Everybody says Cam Newton's overrated. He made it to a Super Bowl. I mean, when you think of the players, yo, they always choke. This player never performs well. Nine out of ten times, at least that player made it to a certain, he made it to the big game. Joel B can't even do that. He stinks. He's garbage. He's trash. Get him out of here. He's a bum. He's never in shape. He never holds himself accountable. And your most important, Joel Embiid is a bad teammate. He ruined Ben Simmons. He threw his entire coaching staff under the bus. Then he got Doc Rivers fired because he sided with James Harden, only for James Harden to not even be brought back. At some point, Joel Embiid needs to be held accountable for the seven foot three overrated waste of space bum that he is. He's seven foot three, reigning MVP, multiple time scoring champion, and can't get out the second round in a conference with no other centers. There's not another center in the conference that's even as remotely as good as Joel Embiid, and he still can't get out the second round. It'd be one thing if he was in the West with Anthony Davis. And Jokic. It'd be one thing if he was out there in the West with Wimpy Yama. He's in the East. The only other center in the East is Bam out of Bayou. What the hell are we talking about? 
Giannis is a forward. They got they got Brooke Lopez been playing center. So Giannis, Giannis, they ain't doing the same thing. So what we talk, and he hasn't even played Giannis in the playoffs. And he still can't get to the freaking conference finals. Joel Embiid is a bum. Okay? He's a bum. Knicks in five. Bing bong. That's it. That's all. Hit the like button. Hit the sub button. Drop the FUs in the comments if you rock with me. And stay vicious. Dismiss. <laughs>